Hey guys, welcome to the homestead. So what we're going to do today is show you our garden. At this point in the garden, it's past mid-July. We're getting ready to head into August, and it's all about the harvest season. So the garden is becoming overgrown. The weeds are coming up. I'm not weeding anymore in my garden. Um, I'm just basically interested in the harvest. I want to be able to get as much food as I possibly can um, and stay up with it as much as I can because it's, it's not really about anything else right now except getting in the harvest, preserving the harvest so that we have it for food for the wintertime. But I want to show you today the undeniable proof that neem oil does work and we're going to focus on our cabbages today so go come with come with me and check this out Okay, here we have some cabbages. These are looking just absolutely great. They have some really nice heads on them. We're gonna, we're gonna harvest these today. Um, there, there's a little bit of insect damage you can see right over here. And right here you can see a little insect damage, but the heads are great. We got some really great looking cabbages here that we're gonna be able to harvest. Um, today and I just want to show you these are turning out great now this is our main cabbage patch here and we have treated all of these cabbages with neem oil and the Dr. Bronner Sal Sud soap um, and, and like I said they're looking really great and there's a little bit of insect damage a little bit of moth damage there but not much it's okay this these heads have turned out just fantastic and so but I'm going to show you now I had some brassicas some cabbages come up that I decided to have an experiment with and to not treat them at all with any Dr. Bronner's Sal Suds or the neem oil. And I want to show you what that looks right now. Let's go take a look. Take a look at that. Take a look at that nonsense. I mean, this thing has just been eaten to pieces. And it's got, you know, the moths all over it and the moth worms all down in there. And it's just destroyed this cabbage. Take a look at this one. Same way right next to it. Look at this one right here. The whole center has been eaten out of that. It is just completely destroyed. I did not treat any of these uh, with the Dr. Bronner Sal Suds or the neem oil and the insects, the mothworms have just had their way with them. This is undeniable proof that neem oil and the Dr. Bronner Sal Suds absolutely work. Totally work. And you know why I would recommend using this for your brassicas. Look at that, just absolutely destroyed these cabbage plants. It's a great experiment. I had all my main cabbage p uh, patch treated with the Dr. Bronner's and the neem oil, and it just works, guys, totally works. Let me go share something with you that I, I also found. So there's no doubt this stuff works uh, amazingly well. I've been using it now for three years. Guys, I am not a paid spokesman, okay? They have no idea I'm doing these videos. I bought this stuff from boogiebrew.net. They're not paying me to talk about these products. I'm not getting any money. I'm not a paid spokesman at all. So just so you know that. But what I'm doing is I'm trying to figure out what works as a guy who whose family raises most of their own food and really does consume that during the year. It's very important for me to be able to harvest as much as I can and then for Jamie to be able to put that up in our pantry for use during the year. And so when I find something that works, I share it with you guys. And I strongly believe in this stuff because now for three years, it has worked. Um, however, as I do research and as I do try to find things that work, um, there are things that I realize, you know, there, you know, we, as you do stuff, as you do, you know, you take on things real time and you try to apply yourself, you learn through experience, right? Well, the question comes, what if I don't have neem oil and Dr. Bronner salsas anymore? What if I can't buy this stuff at the store or online or on Amazon or wherever? What if it all goes away? What do I do? You know, how do I grow my cabbages? And the realization hit me as I did some more research that cabbages don't normally grow here in the Ozarks. I mean, it's been farmers, gardeners, you know, people who like growing these things, who have brought these in and have tried to grow them here. But, you know, when you do so, you're under constant battle of things like, you know, squash bugs and slugs and different moths that come in and, and the worms that they hatch out and they eat your produce. And so you're constantly battling with these things and it, it's hard uh, to be able to grow them to, to maturity. And so... You know, where are these things more adapted at growing? Have you ever been, you ever seen pictures of the cabbages they grow in Alaska? Amazingly huge cabbages. I mean, just gigantic. It's because they don't have problems with slugs. They don't have problems with um, the moths up there. And some of the things that we have problems with here that just when they see a cabbage, they just delight in eating it all for you. Um, 
And so, you know, they don't have that problem in some of the northern climates. They're, they're more geared in places like northern Europe. They're geared uh, to be able to grow some of those brassicas that down here you can grow them, but you're going to have a battle on your hands every year, to, you know, when you do so. And so um, you, you experiment with different companion planting and, and trying to see, you know, what you can pair with your cabbages in order to make your, your soil um, repel uh, and your plants to repel and other plants that would work to repel the, the, the pest and, 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 and pressures that you would get from, you know, these insects. So you have to work, and, you, and sometimes you find things, sometimes you don't. And I'm experimenting with some, try, some of the companion planting, and I'm trying to research what companion planting would work well for that. But you know what? If I don't find any, I'm just not... I'm, it, one day, if, if these you know, go away, I'm just not going to be able to grow cabbages. You know? And you have to you know, align your thinking with that and say, okay, if I can't grow cabbages anymore, if, if I was never able to grow cabbages anymore, and that would be just, that just would boggle my mind because we love cabbages so much, but what could I grow that does do well here that the pests do not hurt and they, they don't, they usually stay away from, and that gives my family the most amount of, of food? And so I concentrate on those things. And so as a farmer, as a homesteader, someone who's living off-grid and you're trying to do, do so in the most natural methods you know, possible and understanding that the, while these things are great and they absolutely do work, if they go away, you have to concentrate on the, on the things that work. You know, what works? You know, what are the plants that grow easy here that give a lot of yield and can feed my family if I don't have some of the more modern methods and modern ways uh, to be able to, and natural ways. I mean, because these products are natural. That's why people like them. But the neem oil is from India. And last time I checked the map, I'm a long way from India. So if there comes a time where I can't get these things anymore... I got to be able to adapt and overcome and, and, and concentrate on the things that I know are going to produce the most yield for my family. So I hope that makes sense. Um, and it, it's just something that I have to continually gear myself to think towards. You know, it's great to have these things and they do work, but if some reason they're taken all away, what also works in my garden that I don't have to fight so hard for every single year? And uh, while I love our cabbages, there just may come a time where I can't have them. So what can, I, what can I have and what can benefit my family? Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you next time on American Homestead. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please click the thumbs up button below the video. It really means a lot to us. And be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Now you can support an American Homestead by becoming a patron. Visit patreon.com slash an American Homestead to see all the benefits of becoming a patron of our channel. You'll get access to private videos, pictures, and even live question and answer sessions that you can participate in. Some patrons will even receive free gifts throughout the year from the homestead. Visit patreon.com slash an American Homestead to check it out and see the rewards of supporting our channel.